Hi folks, thanks for joining in. Uh, today I'm going to create a WhatsApp clone using cursor and comic chat. Uh, I've loaded up cursor. If you don't know where it is, you can go to cursor.com and download it. Um, I'm going to go and start with, I've created a new project, like a new folder. I'm going to go and start by creating, uh, by opening up Composer and asking it to create a Next.js project in this folder. So it's going to give me a bunch of uh, terminal in command lines that I need to copy paste. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's primarily just this one. And just hit enter for the default settings that you get. Once that is done, you can wait a little bit um, for it to initialize. Okay, once it's initialized, you can go ahead and run the project. So it's npm. And you can see this URL. This is the URL we need to open up. It says ready in 2.7 seconds, which is good. I'm just going to go ahead and load up localhost. We check this out. Yep, it looks like it has loaded fine. Now let's go and create a new project. So uh, uh, we can probably start by a single composer. I just want to add the WhatsApp uh, UI to this first. So I've not seen great results, but because Claude is uh, trained with the WhatsApp UI, it's easy for it to generate one. But usually you could use Figma and export that into HTML, or you could use an AI tool like Viversel to do, do something similar for you and then import that over here. But in this case, let's go and try and let's try and ask um, Composer itself to create the WhatsApp UI. So just hold on, let me do that. Create a WhatsApp UI or desktop. We can minimize this again to the floating composer. So it's created it in index.html and that's not something that I want, but let's accept it first and then let's move it to the home page. So it's gone ahead and it's moving it to just another HTML page and but I want it to be part of the next JS project. So, oh, so sometimes it's gonna trip up like this and that's okay. But let's try and see if we can get this back to normal. So right now I don't think this is gonna this is gonna still display this. Let's see what happens now after this. Nope. So we should say it's the now this that and the home B. Right, so we're just prompting it and trying to tell it that hey, it's still not working. So it's making relevant changes. It's adding some index.tsx file. Hopefully, it should get it right now. Nope. So it cannot delete files for you. So that's something that we'll have to do. So it says delete index.html. Just going to go ahead and delete it and move it to trash. Besides that, I think it has rest of it in place. Let's accept all. Let's reload the screen. Nope, still nothing. Let's go and check what's happening here. There is an index.tsx here. Uh, there's a page.tsx. That's the one we want to modify. The problem is that you would all like it saying index.tsx. And you've got a phone page and skin of saying. And here you can also do an add the date and mention a file. So I could say page.tsx. So now let's see if it's able to resolve that. So it's deleting, it's asking me to delete the index.tsx and moving everything to page.tsx. So while you may not be a programmer or a, or a developer, I think it's, it's important that, sorry, just give you one second, let me delete this file. Okay, let's, it, it's, it's asking me to rerun. 
So I've done that and let's look at this. Okay, so there's an error. Let's just copy paste this error as it is and let's see what it does next. So it's recommended a bunch of changes. I'm just going to hit accept. It's restarting, ready. Okay, there we go. Seems to be working okay. Now let's begin the next phase. Uh, there are some images missing, so maybe I'll ask it to fix the images. So I'm going to say that some of the images are giving a 404 error. Can you fix it for me? And let's see what happens. Then. So let's put some placeholder SVG. Let's accept it. And then we need to reload. Okay, nothing great, but gets the job done. Let's start the next phase. We can start by creating a new project. Let's okay. get on a chat. And in this, let's start by creating a new composer. So I already have a comic chat app ready to be used and I've got the documentation ready as well. So the first thing we will do is we'll install the SDK. I'm just going to go and do this via terminal and just take a second. Okay, that has been installed. We'll run our server again and now let's go ahead and prompt it. So first thing first, we can initialize comic chat. Uh, initialize comic chat then we are following the code and let's also include the import command so that it knows what to import and let's say for the variables please put them in a configuration file so that I can modify it okay. Need to go ahead and accept all of it. There should be a configuration file. Let me uh, check where it has put the configuration. It's put it in app config .ts. So it's over here. App ID and app region. So let's continue with this. I will initialize it shortly with the right details. First, let's try and add the login. So this is the login code. So now I gain the variable in this should be part of the so I'm again asking it to take any variables in this and move it to the config file and as you can see it has added it over here once all this is done let's hit accept all and I think we're good I've gone ahead and updated the configuration file and now I'm going to run the project and let's see what happens Oops, there seems to be an error. So comment chat, because it runs on the front end, it needs to only use, it needs to use the use client option so that it is not rendered on the server side. This is fairly straightforward. It should make relevant changes so that it works. Let's see, it looks like it's okay. We may have to check developer tools for this. So I'll just open that up next. Okay, looks like it has logged the user in. Now let's say on our and yeah. the left sidebar, fetch users list. And we can use a users, uh, retrieve users list to just get the list of all users. So there, it has already created a sidebar component, but looks like it's creating another another component called user list. Let's see how that pans out. Okay, there is an error somewhere. It says unauthorized. We'll have to check that. It's most likely because the user has not yet logged in. Please make sure you call the error at user list relevant. Many targets when they are for 
Ende und sei dann, ja, okay. Is it going to update the wrapper to first make sure that the user is logged in and then it calls the user list and then let's see the results. It should accept all. Oh, there we go. It has added the users over here. Now let's say our update up user. It should update your main message panel. Use the to fetch. So we're going to fetch message history. So let's go to messages. Receive a message, message history, fetch for one on one conversation. <laughs> Don't forget to dynamically update the UI in the about boat. And let's hit enter again. Cool. I've accepted the changes and now I'm going to go and try here. So let's check out with Spider Man. Okay, great. These are some past messages that I sent. It doesn't look great, so I'm going to ask it to can you update the bubbles to look similar to WhatsApp. We're just going to make it do some uh, design change so that the message bubbles are updated. There we go, I've accepted it. Let's see what it looks like. It's Spider-Man, oops, something has tripped up. Let me go ahead and check what's happening here. Let's just try and reload it and see if it's just, just a smaller problem. Nope, it's not. I'm just going to copy it as it is and paste it. I always prefer to put them. I always prefer to put the. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I always prefer to put the make the UI changes first and then add the business logic. It feels far more efficient that way, because if you trip up the UI, it's really hard to get it back. At least that's what's been my experience. Let's add message sending now that this is working. So. Let's say text message and we're going to send a message here. Okay. Oh, pardon. So they on the send button. They send in message. Now it's going to go ahead and update the message panel. Let's hit accept all. Let's see what happens next. We can probably reload. Let's do test. Hit the send button. Hmm. Message sent successfully. You can see it in the logs as well. Looks like it's working. That was pretty quick. I thought this would take much longer, but in 15 minutes or so, I've been able to build a fairly decent looking WhatsApp clone. But you can keep adding more functionality by following the documentation. But relatively speaking, it all works. So yeah, that's all, folks. Thanks so much for your time today. Bye.